Hello world and welcome back to another mechanism tutorial where today we're going to be going all over how to find ores underground, how to mine them automatically and also process them and do some a little bit of auto crafting today. It's going to be a lot of fun stuff but let's crack straight into it. As always if this video helps you out in any way shape or form please don't forget to leave a like and subscribe it really helps me out and ring the bell button for more tutorials in the future. So firstly, let's cover what we're going to be going through a little bit more today. One is going to be the seismic vibrator as well as the seismic reader. This is going to tell us exactly what ores and materials are underground and under our feet. Then we're going to go on to how we're actually going to mine these things up automatically. And following from that, how to craft things automatically as well. However, starting off, we need to pick up where we left off. Last time, we discovered how to make teleporters, but there is a nifty little tool inside of Mechanism that allows you to teleport without actually needing to have a portal created, and that is by using the portable teleporter. Shock horror. Now, this is going to require two basic control circuits, two energy tablets, and one teleportation core, and this will give us our teleportation portal. Now, you do actually need to charge this up by either using a charge pad or some sort of cell like we have over there. And inside, if we just right click in the air, first you'll own the item. This will pop up in your chat. And then when you right click again, you will now see all your different teleporters. As you can see, there's no frequency. First, you must select a frequency. Now, this works the exact same as all the other teleporters. You just click one, set it, and then you'll have a link. With all the same way as the regular teleporter portals you can set this to either be private or public these are all public so everyone can see these as well as that you can always add something new like i don't know hello spelt completely wrong uh, but as you can see there's no link because we don't have actually have a portal set up but if we have it linked to let's say subscribe and do teleports we'll instantly teleport to wherever this place was and as you can see all you need is the teleporter block you do not actually need to have the portal frame itself and we can do this for any different place that you would possibly would like to join so i think it's a little bit better than doing this than the teleporters it's a lot less confusing but you just gotta remember that power is going to be used every single time that you do a teleport but how about we actually try and figure out something a little bit new here starting out with how to actually find what sort of blocks are directly underneath you now at the very very early game we can use something called the seismic vibrator now this is crafted with one steel casing five tin ingots one lapis lazuli and two basic control circuits in any crafting table this will give us the seismic vibrator now the seismic vibrator does also need a tool at the same time and that is going to be the seismic reader we need a way of actually reading all the vibrations that are being made by the vibrator itself now this is going to require seven steel one energy tablet and one lapis lazuli and this will give us our seismic reader again this is another tool that is going to need to be charged now i have set up here a seismic reader and i'm using it being powered by just this creative energy tablet behind and now when you right click on it you don't actually see anything interesting all it tells you is that it's vibrating right now you also know it's vibrating from this animation here if there was no power it'd just be completely still you've got the power on the side and it tells you what chunk is currently vibrating now if you're playing well since you are playing minecraft there's a lovely vanilla technique you can use if you press f3 and g at the same time this is going to show you all the chunk borders and as you can see we are currently inside this chunk this chunk right here is chunk 418 now if we take our seismic reader and just right click here you can see that we suddenly get a reading of blocks now at the level i'm currently at which is level 64 if i press f3 here we can see that i'm at y level 64 which is why this is telling me the air block is where i'm standing but if we just scroll down here we can see all of the blocks that are underneath now you might be thinking where are these blocks are these blocks going to be under the seismic vibrator itself no it's actually under the direct block you're standing on so if we go here as we can see it goes let's see a little bit way down at level 57 we have an abundance of five diorites so we see one two three four five then it changes back to stone but if we move over here on the other side and then right click again if we go down to level 57 again it's completely different it's now all stone so it's literally every single block is going to give you a different set of readings and this goes all the way down to bedrock so it's a very good way of saying finding caves because as you can see there's air blocks under here and that means that there's obviously no space there so there's a potential cave right underneath and as you can see it tells you 
all of the minerals underneath, such as iron. But I went ahead and tried to find something a little bit interesting here. So if I take our seismic vibrator and I put it in this chunk right here, now it's vibrating chunk 319. If I go over this space right here and go all the way down, we can see that I've actually managed to find diamond ore under here. Now it only says an abundance of one because that means we know that at least in the vertical axis, there is only one diamond, but horizontally there could be something else. So all we have to do is just step over a little bit and it's ran out of power. Great, now that's powered all back up again. If we just move over just a little bit more, we can see that there is nothing here. If we go to the next side of it and go down again, there's more nothing. Wow, this might be a very, very small chunk. And down here, there you go, we've got two more diamonds. So we know that there's at least three diamonds just from di going all the way down here. So if you wanted to, you could go chunk by chunk. It probably isn't as fast as mining, but it's a nice early game way of trying to find something. Or at least you, what you could do is just see, oh, is there lava directly below me? And there's not. Go down. Now, how about we actually go into something a little bit more advanced? And this is going to be using the digital miner. The digital miner is going to use the robot from the last tutorial. We're going to need two logical sorters. We're going to need two atomic alloys, one basic control circuit, one steel casing, and two teleportation cores inside any sort of crafting table. Now, when you craft this, you only get one, and it is quite big, as you can see here. Now, when you place it down, you can see that there are going to be some squares all around, both on the back, where these chests are, on the top again where this chest is and on the bottom now down here on the sides we have two little green squares now these green squares are actually going to be your power inputs now we are just going to be using creative energy cells because we are cheap and easy when we go inside this may be a little bit overwhelming but as a basics we can see that we have our security here we've got all this redstone toggle ability we can have visuals which i'll show demonstrate in a moment power as well as any upgrades now the digital miner is also one of the machines that can use the anchor module which means that this will the chunk that this is in is always going to be reading and on which means it's going to constantly be mining away for you but if we go inside, this space underneath here is going to be where all your mined ores actually end up going. So every time this machine mines an ore or any type of block underground, it's going to place it directly inside of this area here. But what we can do over this side where we've got three buttons, we have auto eject. Auto eject is going to take all your items from the inside of this and poop it out the back. We just have a chest here for the moment. As well as that, we also have auto pull. Auto pull is going to take things from the top. Now the top chest is we've got loads of stone essentially what that's going to do is every time an item is mined from underneath the ground if we have this on it's going to automatically take that block from this chest here and place it where a block was broken so if you wanted to mine all your ores and replace it with stone or cobblestone or whatever you wanted you could suck it out from this top chest and put it down here now the last thing you've got is silk touch now this does exactly as it sounds say you're mining something or you're going for all ores but you didn't want the redstone dust or the lapis or the coal you could turn silk touch on and then you'll get the actual ore itself but something to note is every time you turn one of these buttons on your power is going to be consumed just a little bit more so at the moment we're using 40 rf per tick if we turn silk touch on it goes up to 240 rf per tick now i don't think there's too much of an energy change yet there's no energy change when ejecting or auto pulling but there are other things that can change the energy required. So let's turn all these off for now and inside we'll see a couple of things. If yours isn't just like this, don't worry, just click the reset button and things should go just to how they are. So if we go into config, we'll see something a little bit daunting. Now this is very similar to the logical sorters. But first, let's start with radii. Radi this stands for radius. At the moment, this digital miner is going to mine blocks within a 10 block radius, which means it's going to go 10 blocks that way and 10 blocks that way. But we can actually change this. If we wanted to change this all the way up to its maximum of 32 blocks what it means is going to mine out 32 blocks that way and then 32 blocks out that way same as with north and south or whichever way the sun is right now but if we go inside of here just to show what the visuals is we have the minimum and maximum. The minimum is the lowest level inside of Minecraft you want this digital miner to mine. We want to go pretty deep, so we're going to keep this on zero. We want to go all the way to Y level zero. The other is the maximum, the maximum height it would mine. So you could have this deep underground if you wanted to and say mine all the way up to max height. 
and it would still mine all the things because this doesn't just do everything that's below. So if we change this up to, let's say, 100, just for argument's sake, now that we've changed both the radius and the height, the power has changed. So by default, it was at 40 RF per tick. Just from changing the radius and the height, it's now gone on up to 96.41 RF per tick. Quite a big difference. But now if we slap the visuals on and look around, we can see this big grey box. Everything inside this big grain box is currently going to mine and it's going to mine absolutely everything because we have not currently set any filters. So if we go inside here and we want to set a filter, this is the exact same as the logical sorter and we showed that off in this tutorial up in the cards here. So we won't be covering all of this today, but we will use the exact same tag as we did last time. So if we go into here to tag and then we type in forge colon ores, we will then get every single ore that is inside of Minecraft. So we just save that and now it shows all the different ores. If we go back and now click start, what we can see is that there is 12,600 ores within this space that are needing to be mined. And it's going to do that slowly over time. As you can see, things are just being collected inside of inventory now. Now at any point you can stop the machine, it will go idle, it will recognize all the different things and you can just easily click start again. At the same time, you can obviously do eject and it's going to start pooping out the back as described before. Hey look, we've actually found a diamond there. And we can also do auto pull and it's going to start taking items out of here over time. One diamond down and it should have started taking some blocks. For whatever reason it's not doing it, but that is definitely how it works. But anyway, and then we have Silk Touch. Now Silk Touch, if we found a diamond, I doubt we're going to find one, but it would do that. Now at any point, what you can do is if you want to reset this or change the config, you first have to stop the machine, reset, change it all back to a vault, and then you have to redo all your tags. Now you can also do the inverse, say you wanted everything but the yours for whatever reason, you can then click inverse mode on, start again, as you can see, there's now 232,000 blocks. It's quite a big difference. Now all the filters, again, they work in the exact same way, so you could do item stack and be like I don't know don't mind any you could say don't mind any dirt put in here dirt and it will see dirt is now in here so if we wanted to just mine all the ores and dirt now we could just do start and there's a lot of dirt in this area now something I didn't show off before is a good way and easy way to get tags before I showed you a simple way of just doing f3 and h this will show you in your tooltip that if you get an ore you can see here forge ores is under this tag for the dimensional shards same with redstone we've got forge ores and all the other things so if you wanted to do just redstone you could do forge colon ores forward slash redstone and that'll give you just the redstone ore so this is a good way of getting things without actually making this item now this item here is the dictionary the dictionary is a very very handy tool if you want to do something quick it requires a book and a basic control circuit this doesn't need charging or anything but essentially if we look at a block and right click it will tell us all the different tags that that block has so the same down here we've got grass and it tells you forge colon dirt which is something you'd put in the machine and this can work for any single block in the game just look at it and it will tell you exactly the tags that you need to input but again we can just use our forge ores uh our F3 and H to show us all our tags. So you don't actually need to have this tool if you didn't want to. However, something that this dictionary is used for is to make an actual item, an actual machine. And this is going to be the or dictionification or dictionificator. God, it sounds just something like Alphinius and Verb. But anyway, this is going to require obviously the dictionary. It's going to require two basic control circuits, one glass pane, four steel and a chest inside any sort of crafting table. Now, this machine here, it does not require any power, but it does exactly what it says on the tin. It's going to or dictionary anything that goes through it. So if you place it down here, I've got it here I've set up some filters already basically you're going to need to be a little bit more in depth with this so when you're mining things up you are going to want to have to start looking at the tags now here I have these are the main things I would like I'm playing in a world that also has thermal expansion ores but I want to use just the mechanism ores. So here I've got mechanism tin, we've got mechanism copper, mechanism lead, and then obviously mechanism steel ingots. Inside of here, I have placed in these filters. We have all these very specific filters. We've got forge ores, tin. Let's just remove that and start again. If I do new filter here, you have to type in very specifically what you want. In this case, we want forge, colon, ores, and then tin. 
If we say yes, we can now select all the different. You can either click or enter to say yes, and then you can siphon through each and different one you want. For me, I only have two different types. I've got the mechanism tin ore, and I've got the thermal tin ore. In this case, we want the mechanism tin ore, and we click save. Now, the exact same works for the ingots. Here, I've done forge ingots, forge slash steel. Very, very simple stuff here. Now, if I take out the immersive engineering steel, we've got thermal copper, we've got thermal lead, and we have thermal tin. If I put these inside of this chest now, they're going to start going through the ore dictionary. Now, you can't see any sort of crafts or anything like that, but we are automatically on the other end getting our mechanism ores. So if you're playing in a world where the specific ores aren't loaded and you're using your miner, every time you get a duplication of ores, say you've got a lead from one mod and a lead from another mod, take one of those, slap, and, slap the digital miner to go through an ore dictionary every single time and then you'll always end up with the right outcome of ores that you want to use. Same as that is if you're using machines where sometimes you might get an immersive engineering ingot or sometimes you might get a thermal ingot put that process through one of these auditifications and you'll end up from with all the right ingots saves you a lot of space and storage instead of having multiple different types now since we're getting so much into using pipes and stuff it's time to give ourselves another nifty little tool and this is the network reader the network reader is made with the energy tablet one glass block one steel ingot and two infused alloy in any crafting table and this is another tool that is going to need to be charged now the network reader does exactly what it says on the tin anytime you have a pipe down of any different type of pipe it could be a mechanical pipe it could be a logistical pipe it could be a heat pipe or a pressurized tube pipe for gases if you take your reader and then right click on that pipe it will tell you some stuff inside of the chat now as you can see the transmitters means that there are four pipes here that's what transmitter is acceptors will be one tank as it's only connected to the tank then we've got needed to fill this pipe up we're going to need 256 buckets since it's using water there is no buffer and there's no throughput as nothing's going through it at the same time it shows your capacity of that pipe now if we take our configurator and actually link it up to this pipe it's going to tell us some new things so we want down here if i get in the right space here and put this on and then do our reader you can now see there are two acceptors one is now going to be the pump and the bucket and it's transferring at a rate of 256 buckets per tick very very simple and every time it's going up or down it's going to be varying how much is going through the throughput and again this works for any single type of pipe that you would like now i believe if you shift right click it does also do it on machines as you can see connected side is the top side same with this machine over here but if you did it to something like this chest you can see that the connected side is north so i guess that way is north i was wrong earlier same with this where you have two inputs you've got connected side of south and you have a connected side of north so now we know actually how to find ores how to mine them automatically and what rates we can actually transfer things through pipes how about we start using some of these materials and we could do this through the use of auto crafting now to make your auto crafting you're first going to need the formulaic assemblicator again another thing from Phineas Ferb I think the author just loves that sort of stuff we are going to need one steel casing four steel ingots two basic control circuits one crafting table and one chest in any sort of crafting table and this will give us our assemblicator but how do you actually use the machine to actually do your auto crafting for that you're going to need some of these crafting formulas that's going to require one paper and one basic control circuit per formula you only get one per craft but they stack up to 64 now you are going to need one formula per different item you would like to set so let's actually show off how to use these formulaic assemblicators using ourselves the crafting formulas now you get 64 of these in a the stack and inside of here we have a few different things inside of here we've got many buttons some are grayed out some are not inside of here you can do upgrades as usual speed and all that you can do your configuration as always now inside of here we have got at the bottom here your internal storage here you can put any items that you would like to craft with and and the up here you have our crafting table now by itself you can use this as a crafting table if you so desire so inside of here if we wanted to make a chest we could place our items in here say craft single item and as you can see that has been done there it's been sucked away into our inventory on the side here let's turn that off just for the moment here now if what we could do is place our items inside plank ourselves our chest again 
and then I could say craft as valuable items. This would do out of everything that's here and not down here. But if I put this all inside, I could do craft available items and it would make all six of them at once. Very, very handy. So let's put ourselves a crafting formula in here and then say we want this to be created. Inside on the, on the corner here, we have encode formula. We place that there and we have more buttons that have lit up. Firstly, we have got fill button, the fill empty button. If we click this button here, it will not do anything as our formula is in here. If we take the formula out and then do it, it will empty everything. If we place this back inside, it will then fill it up again. Very, very handy there. As well as that, we've got this button on the side here, which is auto mode. This is the auto craft section. So if I place the rest of these planks inside of here and then say auto mode, it's going to make one and then use the item that are down here in this bottom here. And it's going to start storing them in this section. Now, as you notice, there are six different slots here. So you can hold up to six different types of items or six stacks of the same item. Or basically, you've got six different outputs here if you weren't pumping things away. Now, there is one more button on here which is very, very useful, and this is the stock control button. This button is going to take control of things that are down here. With a chest, it's not going to be too bad. If I have all of these down here, it's going to start crafting away and it's not going to be a problem. If I had some items down on the side here and then I started pumping, it would just automatically start filling up this space again. But what if I wanted to craft an item that used multiple different resources and then I ran out of one item and it ended up clogging everything inside of here. This is where this button over here goes, stock control. It's currently on, but it doesn't matter when it comes to planks. Let's put this off for now. Also, let's take out this formula and take out all of these planks. Let us just say, for example, we would like to make ourselves some torches. So inside of here, let's take ourselves a formula here place that in and just do uh, encode that and then just say auto create very easy stuff here now if i just say we want this one of the sticks this one of coal I said that the wrong way around it would just start going away and we could just keep pumping and pumping and pumping and it would be absolutely amazing but obviously this is a little bit of a tough situation what if we run out of coal entirely suddenly this entire stock would just end up having it being full of sticks that's not what we want this is where we need control stock on now if i click it on while it's already full Nothing's going to happen. It's just going to shift some things around. But if I take the sticks out and then say, oh, yeah, I want to pump some more sticks in. As you can see, it's not happening. If I turn stock control off, it will actually start pumping those sticks in as it's done so here. So let's turn that back on, take some out, and we'll put these sticks back in here. This is now looking for coal. If we put coal into this system, it's going to use that one spot up with coal. So this, you can't evenly split things out in here, but there will always be one remaining slot available for whatever craft you are going to be making. Now, this doesn't just go for items that only require two different slots. If you had an item that you were creating and it had nine different items in order to create it, it would free up and reserve nine different slots automatically but then the other nine slots will be fair gain it doesn't matter what it is it just be whatever fills up first but you always have at least one slot left over per one slot of different items inside your craft then of course you can obviously go to speed upgrades there and then we've got auto eject and it's going to auto eject everything at once but obviously that depends on how good your logical transporters are here and you can see they're all crafted right there well everyone that is everything that i have left to show you when it comes to auto crafting and auto mining but if this in tutorial helped you yeah, in any way shape or form please do not forget to leave a like and subscribe and ring the bell button as next time we're going to go all the way into quadrupling our ores using this massive monstrosity everything's already been recorded and ready but it's going to be coming out next week but until next time guys take care